Oh, crap, you caught me. Well, there you go. Hi, kids. Oh, you wacky kids. So, here we are. Uh, it's been a couple weeks since I made a video because I've uh, got this big job and uh, trying to get it out the door. I wanted to take this opportunity to do a little state of the shop and some short topics. Uh, I myself am a short topic. I have many topics that are undersized. Moving on. Uh, getting to the top of the pile of the backlog customer stuff and then um, still not going to take any... Um, uh, I, I don't want to say I'm not going to take any new work commercially, but um, I'm going to be selective because I got to get a day off. I got to get my thing back. I got to have a life. I got to. I got to. I got to go on a date. Anyway, um, but uh, you know there is a light at the end of the tunnel, and the and the and there's a metaphor. Anyway, here's some short topics for you, and I'll see you on the flip side. Okay, you little hippies, here we are on my lap. A place where I know you want to be. So, with the opportunity of doing one of these, I have an opportunity to show you. Your leaky oil cooler that shows up on the transmission bell housing. It is a near universal thing for not just the ProMaster, but all the Pentastars. And the culprit are these five O-rings here. Uh, well, four, technically. Um, they work harden over time, because even though you're sealing aluminum to aluminum with this Dorman unit, um, in the factory one is plastic, but the problem is this thing, as you can see, bolts on and those are what make the seal and they work harden over time and cycles and heat and blah, blah, blah. And they become brittle and they leak and that fills up the valley of your engine there and it leaks out over the transmission. Once that fills up, it leaks out over the back of the transmission. I painted that one yellow so we can see if it's going to leak um, in, the, in the future. But that's the general idea and it will show up on the bell housing and so on. This is called the oil cooler problem or oil cooler leaking. It is a cooler, but it's technically a heater. It's designed to keep the engine oil at the same temperature as the motor oil. I'm sorry, it's designed to keep the oil at the same temperature as the coolant to get it up to temperature quickly and to keep it there for viscosity purposes because the valve timing works on viscosity. So t I suppose it's a heater. It's a cooler too, but whatever. It's a heat exchanger. And... Uh, this is, of course, the Dorman upgrade, which you may or may not be able to get because they're perpetually on back order, but this is the way to go. If, if, your, uh, if yours leaks, which they all do, oh, maybe around 100,000 miles or so, not all, but almost all, um, it's a great time to upgrade to the Dorman, but I am hesitant to tell you to upgrade to the Chinese knockoffs of the Dorman because I have had problems with those. I would almost recommend the factory plastic unit over the Chinese knockoff. That, I mean... <sighs> We have no way to test, we have no way to know, but I know that this is high quality and I haven't had really any complaints. Another thing you need to know about your oil cooler is if you put the O-ring under the oil filter cap in the wrong land, it will leak out the sides and back of the cap and it will mimic a blown cooler. And, how, and this happened to me personally, basically twice. Dealers came and lifted $1,000 off of me each time early in ownership because I didn't know about this. Um, but if you see oil on your transmission bell housing or that it's leaking, one of the first things to do is look on the side of the barrel here to see if it's actually coming down this barrel section that the filter lives in, because that would indicate it's, a, it's the problem with the O-ring with the cap, not the cooler itself. And there I just saved you $1,000. All right, well, we've learned a lot here with your rubber O-rings. Carry on, good people. Here's one for you spicy little nymphomaniacs. So uh, we're talking about the bolts that hold the cat onto the block. And there are four, obviously. These two at the bottom just hold the turning bracket, so you may not need to remove those. But these two are notorious. When they break, it sucks because you're either drilling it out there or welding a nut on, and it turns into a big nightmare. Here's an upgrade. So the, this is the original bolt, and you can see it's sort of a cap screw looking thing. And it's a M8, uh, 10 millimeter M8, 1.25 pitch by it's about 25 odd millimeters 27 millimeters whatever and it has a piloting area in my dirty little hands i want you in my dirty little hands um this this sort of piloting shoulder there anyway i'm going to substitute these which are m8 uh whatever the hell they are m8 1.25s but the goal here is that dig the dig the heads of these bolts 
which one is going to be more likely to break off? The answer is this one's going to be less likely, so we're going to, and it's bigger, so we'll substitute that. Um, the, I am uncertain whether I should, as a policy, go back in here with grade eights or something like that. The logic would be that the cheaper bolts are going to rust more, and they're going to, um, but they're going to be easier to drill out if they break. A, a, a grade eight bolt or some high grade, you know, some fancy bolt is uh, gonna rust just as bad, and when it snaps, now you have difficulty drilling it or welding to it or whatever. I use this type of stuff, especially on the lower flange, because as you can see, it's through bolted. So you use the cheapest bolts, galvanized crap bolts you can find, and then the next time you go to take it off, you just snap the bolt and it falls right apart. Great, in other words, the bolts are sacrificial. You don't need to reuse them. The way this is, is you can get a, a death wheel in behind here or something, so you never get stuck on these. These are always get offable. Even if the shank breaks in there, you can pound it out with something. But up here is a different story. I would argue that going to bolts with bigger heads solves the problem. Anti-seizing the crap out of them when I put them in there with high temp anti-seize is a no-brainer. And I would, I mean, if you're the kind of guy that wants to spend your Saturday afternoon doing little weird upgrades on your, on your van, and you have a new enough van, I might argue that you should go in there, pull these stock at, stockers out, and replace it with something like that. But I don't know, man. I mean, we can have an argument about that if you like, but I'm doing it on this van, and now you know. Okay, maybe out will show it better. Let's imagine you're removing your starter. Slide it forward. Tip the nose of the damn thing up. I mean, one-handed, come on good as that and then it will come out in theory if you had trouble you could unplug the downstream bank one bank two oxygen sensor right there actually point bank two oxygen sensor right there would give you a little bit more clearance but that's how it works all right well that was a waste of your time anyway so uh but i, I should reiterate i'm whether or not i take more commercial uh, repair jobs i am uh, always happy to answer your questions and i'm happy to share this vast amount of knowledge that lives between my ears and share it with you and then you will have it and so on and so forth one of the things i'm going to start as soon as i wrap up these last couple jobs is uh, i have six vans that i have to sell because while we've been farting around this last year I've been acquiring broken vans that either need engines or transmissions or whatever and refurbishing them. Okay, love you. Bring it in. Get right up on it. Oh, yeah, you can smell me from here. Woo! Fun.